Okay, um, I was just going to show you how to do a real quick uh, multiple regression on Excel. Um, normally you can't do multiple regression on Excel if you have a categorical variables like uh, marital status art numbers or purchase art numbers, but we can do it on these uh, numerical variables. Very easy. And this question is asking us to Apply multiple linear regression to determine a prediction equation for the number of vacation visits purchased as a function of income and visits. So income is uh, right here, and visits is right here, and this is our training data. You could say this is our this is uh, we'll going to do this a different color. So our training data has this is the income and this is the visits. These are my deep independent variables. My dependent variables credits. So you could call these x. I want to know what credits are as a function of the, you know. So I have all these records with a whole bunch of history of income and visits. I want to know what the credits So I want to come up with an equation to, uh, if I have a certain, in, if I have this income and this number of visits, just those two variables, uh, what would what would the predicted credits be? And we already have actual history of what it was. So you want Excel to come up with a mathematical model. So that's called multiple regression. Now, the book we're using, um, it, it, it uses something called analytical solver. And I'm trying to avoid you guys using analytical solver. So I'm going to stick to something we can do in Excel pretty easily. And multiple linear, multiple regression is pretty easy to put onto your computer. All you have to do is you go into the file and then go into... Uh, uh, let me get this out of the way. Can I get this? You go into options. And then you're going to go to add-ins. And then once you go to add-ins, you go to go. And you can see that I have something called analysis tool pack checked. So all you have to, all you would have to do, you're probably, if you don't show, if it doesn't show up for you, you'd have to check this and go, okay. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that because I already have it. It's already built into Excel. You just have to turn it on. So then I'm going to go into data. And I have something here called data analysis. And normally when you go into data analysis, you're going to scroll down and you're going to go to regression. And regression will also do multiple regression. So what it asks for is the Y range, which is our credits in this case, our dependent variable, and then the X range. Now the problem with uh, this this uh, one in uh, Excel, it doesn't take non-contiguous data. So since this is not next to this, you know, it has this other stuff in between, it's not going to like it. So I have to go to cancel. And I'll go OK. I'll cancel again. So before I start it, um, I, I don't want to mess this up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, oh, I want to go down here and right click on this. And I want to go move or copy. I want to move to the end and create a copy. So I'm going to leave this one alone, and I'll just do it. This is my original one. So this one. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it. I'm going to click on this, and then hold down Control and click on this, 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 and this. And I right click, I'm going to go Delete. So now I make all those contiguous. They're all right next to each other. Okay. So now we can do this multiple regression. So, um, so what I want to do, so I'm going to go back here to data. First, I want to, yeah, I'll go to data analysis. And I remember, get to scroll down to regression, double click it. And my y, y range is going to be all the numbers for credits. Okay, all the way down to the bottom, right? And then my X range, which is my deep independent variable, I can click all these at once and go all the way to the bottom. Okay, and then I this labels if you, this labels what that means. That means we included the labels on top, so you definitely have to click that. And uh, this constant is zero. That means uh, you're going to force the force the y-intercept to be zero, and we won't want to, we won't do that in this case. The book doesn't do that, so we won't do that. And we we'll put the output range. We'll just put it. I you know we'll just do a new worksheet. So it's going to add another worksheet where the answer is. And uh, we don't need any of these extra plots or anything. And we'll just go okay. You can see now we have a new worksheet. And really, the only numbers we need off this worksheet, well, let's look at this real quick, because this gives you a lot of diagnostics. So this thing here, this basically tells you how your good, good your model is, and that, that's very close to zero. And the closer this is to zero, the better your model is. 
So that's showing the model's pretty good. Another thing you want to do is look at the R squared and adjust that R squared. These are actually pretty low, so that's kind of telling you that predictive power is not very good. Um, so anyway, uh, so, and also, but these p-values of the individual coefficients are kind of like this. Um, they basically, if those are very close to zero too, though, that means that's pretty good. The only thing that's kind of scary is this R and R squared is kind of low. So, so that's basically going to tell you the amount of, the amount of variation in the predicted variable, the amount, the amount of variation in the, in the dependent variable that's accounted for by the variation in your dependent variables. And that's pretty low percent. Okay. But anyway, we're going to, this asks us to do this model. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take, uh, I'm going to take these three things and just kind of copy them back to our original sheet. We can just put them here. So we have the intercept, income, and visits. And let me just go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, transpose it. Oops, control Z. Control Z is your friend. I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to transpose it. No, I didn't do it the way I want. Let me do it this way. I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to go copy. Go down here. I'm going to go to transpose. I guess it is the way I like it. Just uh, it just uh, underline this. We don't need those underlined. Uh, let me just go to home. And we'll go uh, no border. Okay, so we can get rid of this. So I'm just putting them in the right order. Uh, delete this. All I did is I just, uh, you know, let me just, I can copy this over this and I'll get rid of that line. Ah, my mouse isn't agreeing with me very well today. Okay, so. So these are the numbers. I just took these numbers and I rotated them. And I took them from this, this sheet here. These coefficients are what we want. Okay. So now we so now we have our equation. So uh, so now I can now I can predict this. We can predict uh, credits. Maybe we'll call it predicted. Okay. I spelled predicted wrong. Let me go look. Predicted. Got the I in the wrong spot. Predict. Predicted credits. Okay, so all of this is very simple. This is going to be equal to this intercept. So I'm going to go F4. Because I'm going to copy this down and I don't want it to move from that. And then plus, and the next thing we have is the income. I'm going to F4 that. And that's going to be times the income that I have in this buyer one. Now I'm not going to F4 that because as I move this down, I don't, these I don't want to move as I copy this formula down. This one I do, I want it to move down to the income for buyer two, buyer two. So I'm not going to have for that. And then plus the visits, you know, I'll go ahead and have for that. And that's going to be times. Um, and the visits is right here for, for, for part, part one of three visits. And then uh, I don't have for that because, again, I don't want that to move down. Remember, these I want to stay. So I now F4 basically automatically puts those dollar signs in front and it makes it what's called an absolute reference. You can type those dollar signs if you want to too. But it's just easier to type, put F4 and automatically puts it. So I hit enter, it gives my predicted visits. Now that's kind of silly to take it to that many decimal places. This is not that exact. So let's just say even that's pretty exact. We can just take it to that, uh, that amount. So that's, we can go formula text. And that shows the formula. So we know the predicted visits. I'll, I'll highlight the answer in yellow for potential buyer one and two and three or that, right? So we just used a uh, multiple regression. Now you can use this a lot for, you know, this is probably very close to something like Zillow uses for the value of the house. It looks at the houses, or, you know, the houses that are close by that recently sold and use some kind of square foot. You know, distance from fire hydrant and all sorts of things like that, and uses those as multiple regression to try to predict. So I imagine Zillow uses a model very similar to this. So anyway, that's as simple as that. Now you got to be very, like I say, you got to be very careful with uh, with um, linear regression, multiple regression, because you can get you can get a prediction on anything. I could go eye color. You know, if I if this problem, this won't use categorical variables, but if you assign numbers to eye colors. Like one is brown, two is green, three, and then you did some, and you and, and then you measured the height of everybody, and say if you're brown, and, or you, and they would say that if you're brown eyes, you're this high. If you're 
But of course, you know, there's no there's no uh, correlation between eye color and height. So you'd probably get really, you know, you'd go try to use that model. It'd be kind of silly. So you got to be very careful and check your model diagnostics and look at the correlation, right? Um, so you could actually, well, I'm not, I don't want to get into it too much further than that. But if you plotted visits versus credits, you're probably not, you're not going to be like a straight line. Two visits is always 3,000 credits. You know, it's going to, it's not going to be, you know, sometimes there's get zero credits for a visit, right? So, so this is not going to be very exact. You can just see from the data that it's not going to be a super exact model. All right. So anyway, that's the answer that you should get. So, um, hopefully that helps, uh, a little bit how multiple regression. Now, if you use that, there's a program, there's an add in for, uh, add in for, for, uh, Excel called Analytical Solver or Frontline Solver is the name of the company that makes it. And that goes with the textbook I'm using, but I'm going to try to get away with, without you guys having to buy that, that add in because that costs money. So we're going to skip parts A, B, and C and just have you do part D. All right. That's it for today. Thank you. Bye.